Good afternoon. I'm David Dahl. I'm a farm advisor for the University of California Cooperative Extension. I'm based out of Merced and I work in tree nuts. This afternoon, I'm going to discuss uh, fertilizing young almond trees. Uh, give this Google Hangout thing a try, so uh, bear with me. Hopefully, it'll work out. So to start off with, we're going to just uh, share this screen and move forward. Uh, with this presentation, we're going to be discussing uh, what types of fertilizer we should be applying to young almonds, how much, uh, how much in a single application, as well as some other concerns that we should keep in mind when fertilizing young trees. So uh, I'm going to start off with overviewing some of the research that I've been conducting over the past four years with the Merced County. Uh, there was two locations and we were looking at different types of fertilizer sources and this include uh, um, sourcing nitrogen as either ammonium, <clears throat> nitrates, or a blend of the two. We applied this material as a, as a granular multiple times through the year at the same rate as four ounces of actual nitrogen per tree. We measured the trees prior uh, to starting the treatments as well as afterwards and conducted tissue analysis. In our first trial site, we can see here, this is a loamy sand soil located in the northern part of the county. This is irrigated with solid set sprinklers. These are very neutral soil, sometimes acidic, uh, with a very low cation exchange capacity, somewhere around three milliequivalents per 100 grams of soil. Uh, six applications of four ounces of total N, so we split up that four ounces over six applications. And uh, what we can look on this trunk is we have seasonal growth uh, on the y-axis between zero and 30 millimeters, and the four different types of fertilizers within the trial, which include ammonium sulfate, calcium nitrate, a controlled release blend, as well as a triple 15. By looking at this trial, the, the fertilizer that performed the poorest, um, again, no differences between the ammonium sulfate, calcium nitrate, slow controlled release, but between the triple 15 and calcium nitrate, we see a difference. And, that's mo and uh, it's due to that nitrate source of fertilizer. When we look on a little heavier soil, this is a sandy loam soil irrigated with micro sprinklers, um, acidic, but with a medium cation exchange capacity. And we look at the same types of applications of fertilizer across the field, uh, but adding in some different types of blends, including ammonium sulfate, calcium nitrate, calcium potassium nitrate blend, a potassium nitrate, a controlled release is triple 15. And in this trial, we do not see uh, differences in for tree performance based on the nitrogen source. Um, looking back at that first trial, when we look at the, the major nutrients and, and the leaf tissue analysis and how they are affected, um, when we look at nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium as a percentage of leaf tissue, um, for the most part, we can see how these trees are performing and how they're uptaking these different nutrients. Um, again, with all the different sources of nitrogen, with the exception of the calcium nitrate, uh, the leaves had the same amount of nitrogen within the leaf tissue. When we look over at the potassium, however, we see that there is a little bit of a difference in scattering of what was actually in the tissue. And uh, from what we can tell is if we had potassium in our fertilizer, we had a little bit more uptake of potassium uh, within the tree. And that's why that triple 15 is uh, having a significant, significantly more potassium within the tissue. When we look at calcium, we see that same effect in which the calcium nitrate had higher levels of calcium within the tissue in contrast to the other three fertilizers, which did not contain any calcium at lower levels. In micronutrients, it's a little bit different um, effect and our zinc, boron, and manganese is being reported with our leaf tissue concentration and PPM. Uh, when we look at these different fertilizers, we can see that it's, it varies across the trees. Uh, but what we can see with zinc in particular is that our uh, acidifying, our more acidifying fertilizers do a little bit better job of freeing up and allowing uptake of these different cations. So that ammonium sulfate, which is known to acidify soil, has the highest level of zinc, uh, as well as has a high level of manganese, but in this case, not different than calcium nitrate or, or, or the, or excuse me, not different than the uh, controlled release of the triple 15. So in saying this is that nitrogen is pretty much nitrogen. Um, in that first trial, we suspect that our nitrogen was reduced in leaf, leaf tissue because of the movement of nitrate outside of the root zone. So keep in mind that certain fertilizers may leach more rapidly. In that second trial, we noticed that there is effect on soil pH, which then changes the micronutrient availability. Our, uh, as well, sorry, not in the second trial, in that first trial, but keep that in mind as well. So different types of nitrogen will do different things to the soil, as well as it may move more readily. So now that we know that nitrogen is nitrogen, we can look at a different, uh, our second set of studies, which is looking at fertilizer rates. 
And these were conducted in sand soil, which had low um, residual nitrate and uh, up two feet. Uh, the nitrogen was sourced as, as, as blended triple 15 granular. We also looked at some controlled release products. We applied these as a variable rates of 0, 1, 2, 4, 6 ounces of actual nitrogen per tree with split applications in the triple 15. In the controlled release products, we actually applied this whole material, the entire season's nitrogen was applied at a single application in the spring. Um, tree growth will be shown, but tree tissue is not. And this is what we found over the year. So on our y-axis, we have our changes in trunk diameter. On our x-axis, we have our ounces of nitrogen per tree. Uh, one, two, three, four, and six. Um, uh, one, two, four, and six ounces of nitrogen as well as zero were the treatments uh, within the trial. The blue lines are conventional. Our red is 120-day controlled release. The green is 180-day controlled release. So this is the breakdown of that product um, throughout the season. By looking at the regression, we can see that somewhere between three and four ounces of actual nitrogen per tree is maximizing growth. And uh, this, uh, this three to four ounces of nitrogen per tree is supported by earlier work that was done looking at newly planted trees by John Edstrom up in Nichols Estate. John Edstrom's a uh, retired farm advisor for Calusa County. And it also supports the work done by Dr. Patrick Brown at UC Davis, in which 20 to 30 pounds per acre of of nitrogen will uh, meet the vegetative growth requirement. So uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind is when you're looking at actually applying three to four ounces of tree is your tree density. So in this case, we have a wide planting of 18 by 22 feet at 120 under 110 trees per acre. On a very, on a narrower planting at 14 by 22 feet, we can see we have 141 trees per acre. And as we increase that density, we can see that the amount of nitrogen that we need to apply also increases. So keep that in mind. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, well, wait a minute here. If you're telling me I need to apply somewhere between 25 and 35 pounds of nitrogen, how come I see an increase of growth when I apply more? So if you envision this as a newly planted tree, and this black line is a riser line, and these uh, green circles are, of course, our trees, and this is the micro sprinkler that we're, we're applying, uh, when we're actually performing the fertigation in which we're applying the fertilizer through the water, um, we, we can see that that wetting pattern does not necessarily um, fall all within the root zone of the tree. So if we can imagine about six inches off that drip line of the tree, we have roots that are exploring and mining that soil for water and nitro nitrogen. Uh, but for the most part, over half of what we're applying uh, to the tree isn't getting there. So that, that application inefficiency uh, is probably why you're not seeing the same results. And finding a way to minimize um, or increase your efficiency, your application efficiency of your nitrogen will also increase your use efficiency. So uh, what I mean by that is using like a single line drip in which um, you have one emitter per tree and that's applying the nitrogen uh, and the, the water as well as the nitrogen right to the tree and you continue to expand as the tree canopy expands. Or uh, you uh, start off a little bit slower and make sure you get those trees out and the canopy up before you start putting on higher applications of nitrogen. So how much should we be applying to these orchards? Well, for uh, uh, for older orchards, we talked a little bit about first leaf orchards, somewhere between three and four pounds per acre. And that seems to be the growth requirement for second leaf as well as older trees. So uh, 25 to 35 pounds per acre is required for growth. This is work that's been um, determined by Patrick Brown and looking at these trees. And uh, when you start yielding on a crop is that you need to add in uh, nitrogen to match crop demand. So if you have a thousand pounds, that's roughly 85 pounds of nitrogen to meet that demand. But once those orchards start yielding over 2000 pounds of uh, almond kernels per acre, uh, you, do not, you do not need to add in an additional 25 to 35 pounds of nitrogen. So uh, going back to fertilizing these young trees, uh, my uh, one of my bottom lines is be conservative. Many many little slugs or many little feeds are a lot better than a single large slug. So starting off young trees with a single gallon of UN32, which is roughly three pounds per acre, and doing that multiple times through the year, it's going to get you a lot larger trees um, than applying full you know four or five gallons of UN32 um, every single time.
uh, every, sorry, once a month, excuse me. Um, when we look at the amount of, of nitrogen we need to fly per tree, uh, some general guidance is do not exceed one ounce of actual nitrogen for fertilization for one-year-old trees. And for two-year-old trees, do not exceed two ounces of actual nitrogen per tree. And this recommendation is based on the impacts on growth. If those high nitrogen applications are, are applied to the tree, we can often see very lanky growth in which we do not get these vegetative buds to push and we get these uh, blind wood sections within the tree. Um, in the case in which this fertigation is followed by a series of hot days, uh, you can get uh, rapid nitrogen uptake, which can cause nitrogen burn. And that's what we're seeing here with these shepherd crooks that are forming on the tops of the trees. So what are some other considerations uh, when we're looking to plant, um, when we're looking to fertilize young almond orchards? Uh, the first one is looking at the amount of, of nitrogen within the soil. So uh, the soil analysis should have been pulled prior to planting and, and looking at the nitrate nitrogen concentration as, as recorded in PPM. We multiply that by two, uh, as well as multiply by the soil sample thickness, and we divide that by six inches. Um, so this uh, formula will give you the idea of how many pounds per nitrogen are within that soil. So if we're looking at uh, these two depths of zero to six inches or zero to 12 inches, and we have five through 20 parts per million of nitrate nitrogen being recorded on a report, we have anywhere between 10, 20, 30, 40, uh, and then double that for the deeper depth of nitrogen, pounds of nitrogen available for that plant, for that tree. So if we look at our residual nitrogen, we're somewhere between 15 and 20 parts per million. Uh, and that means we have about 30 to 40 pounds of, of actual nitrogen available in that top six inches, which is probably gonna be the active rooting zone of these young trees. Uh, means we have um, enough nitrogen, residual nitrogen, that we do not necessarily need to apply more to get maximum growth. Another consideration is what's in the water. Uh, when, when we're looking at the uh, amount of nitrate nitrogen in the water, so we can run this calculation by sending our water in for analysis, determine the nitrate nitrogen in PPM, and we multiply that by 0 0.23 to determine the amount of pounds of nitrogen per acre inch of water applied. So uh, here's another table looking at uh, one through 24 acre inches of applied water. Most of our newer orchards planted on micro sprinkler or drip are gonna be having somewhere between six and 12 acre inches of applied water to maximize growth. Um, three, five, 10, and 15 parts per million nitri nitrogen are across the top. And all these numbers are indicating the pounds of nitrogen that will be applied at those um, at those varying acre inches. So when we look at this table and we start looking, oh, at, at between six and 12 um, PPM nitrate, or six to 12 inches of water, uh, we're gonna get maximum, uh, we're gonna get enough nitrogen applied if we're registering somewhere between 10 and 15 parts per million nitrate nitrogen. Again, looking for that 25 to 35 pounds of actual nitrogen per tree. Some considerations on the different types of fertilizer to keep in mind. Uh, urea is pretty stable, it's water soluble. Um, it needs to be converted to nitrate, but in, before it can be picked up by the, the plant. Um, generally in California soils, we're warm enough that this, is, this process is relatively rapid. It can volatilize and you have off gassing. Um, ammonium is another very common fertilizer uh, that can be used. I would suggest uh, using it more on um, basic soils as it can acidify. Um, it can also be used by plants in anaerobic conditions. Um, a good cheap source of this is ammonium sulfate. Excuse me. Um, some other sources are nitrate, which is commonly known as calcium nitrate or potassium nitrate. And this is being sourced as a readily available form of nitrogen, which being nitrate, but being negatively charged, it can be easily leached. And this is what we observed in that first trial up above in which the calcium nitrate application on that same soil did not perform as well as the other types of fertilization. Enfuric is a source of acid that can be used to help acidify water or soils in case of, of high pH, uh, but it also performs, uh, provides nitrogen as well. And let's not forget our blends, which are more commonly used, UN32, CAN17, uh, which have the benefits of being able to easily inject into the system. 
Uh, so when to start? I would wait till we have at least six inches of growth on these trees. If you have enough soil or uh, some residual nitrate within that soil, you can probably hold off to get a little bit more growth. But somewhere around six to 12 inches, uh, we need to apply that, that first um, shot of nitrogen in order to give us the, the maximal growth. I would urge caution in starting too soon. Um, hold off that irrigation until we start seeing this root zone have a little bit of a dry down. If we over apply water, we can into the root zone. That means this condition just outside of that developing root zone is anaerobic, and this can prevent uh, plants from, or excuse me, can plant prevent roots from moving into that anaerobic soil and um, pulling out nitrogen and water and suppress growth. So with that, I appreciate your um, your attention during this talk, and uh, look forward to working with you all in the future. Thank you.